welcome to Community Voices with Kari Lissa Thorne. And I have with me today Joanne Victoria. And we're going to be talking about all sorts of things are about community leadership, women, and we are going to be talking about a beautiful business that she's created called Gemma and Bixley. So welcome, Joanne. Welcome. Thank you for having me here. I, I'm very excited. Well, you and I have been in several groups together, and I've always loved women that are all about women's issues, and not, I don't mean issues, but just empowering women to actually stand up for themselves and actually speak their voices, and also about leadership. So I think it's very important that women learn to actually speak leadership. So first of all, I'd love for you to actually share with the audience, how did you actually get involved in creating your business? Well, this is not the first business I have been in. As entrepreneurs are wont to do, there's more than one business involved. And I have been in several. I worked for other people for a while, but I really didn't like being told what to do. So I got out of that real quickly, and then I wound up where a lot of women wind up. And it was good for me. I wound up in real estate. So for a long time, I was in real estate doing quite well, but I got bored. I get bored real easily. And after several years, I decided, somebody said, you should put on seminars. And I said, okay, I'll do that. And I had no idea what was going on about that. So I did my first workshop or seminar, however you want to call it, with a partner. And it was called, um, it was about getting rid of your anger. So that went on for a while where I did several workshops and seminars and retreats. And finally I got bored with the manner in which I did it and I said I'm going to combine both sides my business aspect which I'm really strong at and my front of the room and consulting and coaching aspect and create another business altogether that's going to really help people in business become better in their life as well as in life become better in their business and this probably happened about maybe a dozen years ago it's had many permutations so that was exciting to me to be able to bring business into the personal development world so that women, primarily women because of the ones that I attracted at the beginning, then I attracted a lot of men because I'm pretty bottom line and men like that. And uh, that's how I came here. I mean, it was a default kind of thing, but I've pretty much been fortunate enough to trust my instincts and follow them for a long time. Well, something I also found that I also liked about you is that you also have done some business with your daughter. And I think a lot of women don't actually do things like that with family or with whether it be their son or their husband. And I always found, at least for me anyways, I always love doing business with people that I know, I like, and I trust. So I know that your website is Gemma and, Gemma and Bixley. I know that was something that you did do with your daughter. Um, and that, you know, again, that's a woman empowering thing. How did you come about doing that and I know you also have your own business. Are you actually still doing business with your daughter or have you gone, you know, is she doing something of her own now? I always like asking that question because I found that is in itself its own journey. How did that actually enhance your relationship and, um, and how did that actually affect your business? Because that's something that's very interesting. I found a lot of people actually have their own inner journey in doing that. Well, it's interesting because, as you well know, years ago you would always have, you had Sanford and Son, you always have somebody and Son, you know, to keep the business going. Well, at the beginning I tried to get my kids interested in real estate and they weren't interested in that. Then another aspect between all of this was construction. So all of my kids, I have three, and two sons are involved in construction and my daughter was involved in that as well, in consulting general contractors. And then one day we looked at each other and I let her bring it up because to me it was a, a natural next step, but I didn't want to push. I really like working with my kids. I really like working, as you said, with people you know and trust. But this thing, this new journey with my daughter was going to be a totally different thing. She didn't know how it would work. I didn't know how it would work, but I wasn't worried about it. I, I, did, I had no great concerns because we were coming even though we have similar values and a similar value system and how we are in the world, we were coming from different uh, perspectives, different ways that we work. Her strengths were certainly not mine and my strengths were some of hers, but I know nothing about um, 
computers and creative and writing uh, for the internet and all of those things that I'm, I'm not interested in that so it was a good match but it was interesting as we went forward because then she started growing in another way and creating more on her own which was fine with me how it evolved it was rather quickly but how it evolved was all good for me that it changed its way you know I changed from the joannevictoria.com uh, brand to the Gemma Bixley brand and but still it's me it's ultimately me and then she got so excited about what she was doing that she attracted different energy and went on to get a job in the corporate world and which is also again fine with me I don't get upset about things like that how things evolve because it's always for the good of the other person if it's good for them it's good for me and you know she's happy now but again still has that itch to be an entrepreneur <laughs> because nobody really you know if you're very creative you don't really want to be stuck in a place where somebody said this is what you must do so for her it's another evolution and she's uh, unfolding and doing what she's doing and then I get to hear the byproduct of the job that she has and how it's working for her and the people she's meeting and it's a very small world but it's exciting for her but it's it was it's an interesting evolution to work with your children but I always referred what? when I was in construction I used to work for a builder and I managed and sold houses in Northern California in five counties but I always hired my kids I would hire my kids other people that I knew and friends of my children first before I would hire a stranger I just think that there's more um, you feel I trust is more trust they know who I am I know who they are and it's easier to you know to communicate so what I, the reason why I brought that up is, A, I think it's really important to teach our kids about business, about worth ethic, and again, you're teaching them, you're coming from a place of, A, you know their values because you've brought them up. And I think it's, again, we're preparing them for the real world to actually go out there and, like you said, either creating them to be an entrepreneur, which I think is such a great thing nowadays because I see so many kids, you know, coming through high school, then going to get a college degree and coming out and having a really hard time in getting a job. If we teach our kids these business values and work ethic and giving them these entrepreneurship ideas and principles, they can go out and create a business for themselves. If they don't want to work for somebody else, they can go create a business for themselves and work for themselves. So I think, and, and since I, I know you, since we've, we've actually been in groups together, social media groups, and we've actually had conversations beyond this Google Hangout in this interview, Mm -hmm. We talked about that. I thought that'd be a really good thing to bring up to actually, you know, actually encourage people to have that type of entrepreneurial spirit that we teach our kids, so they can actually go out and have that energy or know how to create a business for themselves. So I thought that was something that would be really good to bring out and to put out there for other people. You know, I agree. To, to I encourage agree. our our parents to educate our children to have that business know-how prepare them for reality in real life so that if they come out to being educational, I'm not, I'm not at all putting out, just, in other words, I'm not saying don't put your kids to college. What I'm saying is I see so many kids coming out and being disappointed if we teach our kids other ways that at least they have some other business acumen to be able to come out and be able to create a business for themselves. And I really admire you for actually doing that with your daughter and also doing that with your sons. And, yes. and also, like you said, not being disappointed when your daughter chose to go do a different avenue and going, oh, no, you have to work for me. You didn't do that. You said, no. I really enjoyed our journey together. At the same time, you grew, I grew, and I totally give you your wings to go do something else. Right. Well, my sons are entrepreneurs as well. They don't like working for anybody else because they learned young how to do things in the business world or how to work. They were put into the you know the workforce when they were obviously illegal age. They were 12, 13 and 14, mostly 14 uh, when they were out there doing things. It's I think it's important that you have skills. It's important that you have the value of work and know how important it is. In some sense it's easy to go to college because college today 
it depends if you're really special. I told my children, if you want to be a doctor lawyer or a lawyer or something on that level, I will see that you go to college. But if you don't, you're going to have to find, a, you know, figure out a way to make your life work for you because I'm not going to carry, carry you for the rest of your life. And they learned quickly. And they're all, you know, my daughter's been back and forth, and ultimately she will be an entrepreneur again and own her own business again. She's already got ideas about that. So as long as they have ideas and as long as they're creative about them and they're happy, if they're happy and healthy, you know, that's all that really matters. It's That's all that's really important. So the other thing I really wanted to discuss with you, because you and I have this sort of metaphysical intuitive background is a lot of people don't think you can be intuitive and have that metaphysical background and still have as you and I both have that kind of male business energy that you can still use your intuition have self-confidence and self-esteem and be positive and not be woo-woo right and still in other words talk about positivity and talk about intuition all these things and still have both female male energy and not come off in this woo woo manner and still be business acumen, be able to talk business, have a successful business. And I was actually just having a conversation with someone earlier today, actually, and they're saying, well, yeah, but you can't just talk about positive and you can't just talk about being, uh, talk about intuition, you can't talk about all these things and still be, you know, successful or still, you know, be a business mindset or, or be taken seriously. So, so I'd love to talk about some of those talking points as well. So let's talk a little bit how intuition and business can be actually useful. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think intuition is extremely useful in business. In fact, I used my intuition in business before I even knew I was intuitive. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I think if you have it, you just go with it. But I was more... Uh, involved in being in business as a business woman. There was no way I ev was even aware of intuition many years ago. In fact, when I was hitting walls in my career and being um, looking for a change, I thought I needed a change, I met with what I'll call a career counselor. And I say what I'll call because he turned out to be something else entirely but opened a another vista for me. But I remember a conversation that I had with him when we were discussing, you know, should I go back to school? Should I learn more of this? What should I do? I'm, you know, I, I was confused. And he said, it doesn't matter what school you go to. You have your intuition, and that's going to leap you forward in doing anything you want to do. So you don't need to worry about educating yourself in college or anything like that. And he said that, and I put it away, but I had no idea what he meant. So I just took it with me and continued to trust my instincts because that's what I've done all along. So when I realized, when I got to the phase of my life where I was conducting seminars and workshops and coaching people before the word coaching was coaching and all of that, I realized, you know, I just have to, it, it wasn't even a realization, it was just another step that this is easy to use in business. So for me, what was, you know, using intuition in business is, you know, going into a place, seeing what's going on, and looking at the space between where they are and where they say they want to be, and knowing how to get there, but I have to get the people on my side. So with that, I use my intuition. And it's really, it doesn't have, to, I don't have to go in and say, okay, I'm an intuitive business consultant, and this is what I'm going to do. I have to validate myself depends on who the client the prospect is before they become a client and if they like what I have done in the business world in other places and they go oh, yeah that's good that's good now what are you gonna do for me and I'll go well nothing because we're gonna work together so once we start working together everything a client says to me is insight into how they function in the world and I'm able to easily adapt and cross the brain from the left side to the right side and speak to them in a way that they hear me. That's an intuitive aspect, just speaking to people in a way that they can hear you. And I'm able to do that. And then if I can read something on them, well, is this what you mean? And they'll go, how did you know that? It's because I'm using both sides of my brain, you know, the, the, the supposed male left side of the brain that is 
you know, a little more calculating in the executive side, which I stayed in for 20 years, by the way, when I was working. And then combining that with the right side of the brain, which is the creative, intuitive side, and coming up in, in, with an answer in a way that satisfies the client without going into, oh, let's do some hand-holding and meditating. I don't bring that into the workforce because what I do is subtle from my point of view. It's impactful for the client, but I don't hit them over the head with my perspective. They know who I am in the pre-interview, you know, and I know if there's a good fit. It's not a good fit. It doesn't matter if I'm intuitive or not. I mean, seriously. Exactly. And I love the way I love I love the way you actually painted that picture. So the other things I really love to talk about, because you and I speak the same language, and we also post similar things. And I love it. I'll get this all the time. People go, all you do is post positive things on your wall. All you do is post positive pictures and quotes and all this thing. There's no way you can be this positive all the time. And you must and I'm like, first of all, I'm human. Don't think I don't occasionally have my meltdowns. And don't think that I occasionally don't say negative things. I do. The difference is I'm aware when I say them and I also catch myself and I neatly reframe what I'm doing so that I don't actually put myself in a negative state and wallow in it. I immediately attempt to get myself out of that. So we're also talking about how language changes everything. I don't think people get that. Our words really do impact. Not only do they impact ourselves, they do impact others. So that's another thing, you know, that we can get into hours and hours of conversation about law of attraction and how people think law of attraction is a bunch of, you know, BS. And now, yes, believing if I, you know, hold this mouse in my hand and, you know, and all of a sudden it's going to turn into gold and all these other things. I mean, so do we have to do things to get what we want? Absolutely. If I just think, you know, oh my God, you know, so this is woo woo and so that's what I'm saying so there there are ways to be positive and and that's why I use the word woo woo because I'm, I'm not of the, of the principality of law of attraction and rule. I am of the principality of law of attraction is that if I really do want something I have to work for it so there's, right. a, there's a both and to this so law of attraction means that I, I will draw like so if I'm in a positive mental space I'm gonna draw positive people to me positive experiences if I'm in a negative space and I stub my toe in the morning, which everyone's heard the story. You stub your toe in the morning, wake up, and you're in a negative, nasty mood because, oh my God, I stubbed my toe the rest of my day. I'm going to be in negative space. Therefore, I'm going to actually affect my coworkers because if I'm in a negative attitude, how do you think my coworkers are going to experience me being in a negative state? So, and I know you, you know, love this as well in terms of how language changes everything and also how that affects our self confidence, self confidence, and self esteem. So how do you do that in your own daily life? Well, you're talking about stubbing your toe. I could tell you a story about someone whose name I won't mention who dyed her hair and it turned out to be clown orange. And then in a short period of time, she had to dye it a dark brown. So things happen and you just have to be aware, again, which is spiritual maturity, actually. And that's part of being spiritual is being aware of what you do with your life. So you just have to pay attention, and paying attention is the hardest part because that means you have to focus on you and what you do. So you can't bring your stubbed toe or orange hair and have it affect other people in a way that has nothing to do with them. And nothing we do, you know, everything that we do to ourselves, we can do to other people if we want to be bitchy about it, but we're not supposed to. That's not who we are. If we're going to be responsible, spiritually mature, aware, conscious, trusting people, you have to pay attention. So you stubbed your toe, and then what does that mean? That means, oh, I was careless. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I'm just making that up. Just a, you know, a simple, simple response to pain in the toe. But you can't take it with you, because you can take it with you and build and build and build and build and build, and then you're in a place where you're mean. It's just not going to work with other people. They don't want to hear that. And it's not fair. It's not their problem that you stubbed your toe or I stubbed my toe. So you have to learn to let things go quick, 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 quick. And I think that is the biggest part of you know a daily thing. But I have things go on all day long, and who cares? To be, who cares? 
who really wants to know about them? They're, some, they're insignificant to others, significant maybe to me, but I just have to look forward. You know, why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing today? What is my purpose for being here? Am I focused? Am I grounded? Or am I just going to take my meanness uh, throughout the day and throw it at other people? But a lot of people use wrong language. They talk about themselves badly. They just say very negative things about themselves. To me, it's a little bit more evolved than negative positive. I think when you're negative about yourself or certainly anything else, you're in pain. Somewhere you're in pain. You're covering, it's a cover up. But even saying positive things is not always sufficient to uh, negate the negativity. It doesn't dilute it that much. It just gives you a different frame of mind. I think there was something one of your um, friends on Facebook said, or your mentor, I guess, I don't remember, recall his name, you know, but what do you do? You know, you said that you took a deep breath and you had a thought about it. And, you know, I had read someplace and it really worked for me is just say, not a thought. It disconnects the continuation. So, but how many people are going to do that? Hopefully somebody listening and watching to this this broadcast will do that. But, you know, if you're stuck, because we get stuck in that negative thing, you have to go, oh, what's the next thought? Anything to break the cycle. I, I used to do workshops on how to end all negative habits. Very simple title. But it really was about people stopping the anger, stopping the fear, stopping all of these things. And you just had to change the behavior. I'm oversimplifying. But all of, it, all of what we're talking about is changing behavior. And anybody, anybody can change their behavior. They have to want to, but it's not that. It's not, you don't need a degree. You don't need to, you don't, you could do it on your own. One of the things that's really, really important to me is helping people take care of themselves, by themselves, for themselves, empowering them to be strong in that way. And that's really important to me. They don't have to rely on a guru or a god or a this or a that. They can look in the mirror. As you and I are looking in a mirror right now because we reflect each other well. But they can look in their own other kind of mirror and say, this is the person I trust, which ultimately is the person you should trust, is the face in the mirror. So the post you're referring to is the one that Bob Berg just posted, and you can actually find the post at um, B-O-B-B-U-R-G dot com, and the post she's referring to is getting rid of the ants, and the ants stands, stands for automatic negative thoughts. There we are. So it's a great post. I encourage everyone to go read it. Um, and actually, the person that actually he's referring to actually wrote the ANTS acronym is actually my dear friend, um, Corey Jenke, who's also one of the Go-Givers. Uh, uh, Bob Burke started a program called the Go-Givers uh, coaching, uh, coaching Program. And, um, yeah, they're, Bob Burke is phenomenal. He is a mentor. Brownie. He's a phenomenal uh speaker um, and uh, Corey Jenke is a phenomenal coach and yeah he created a system about getting rid of the ants automatic negative thoughts and that's what you're referring to and it is and it's so true and um, I really and what I was actually going to say I that got caught up because I was so engaged in listening to you was I take it a step further when we're talking negatively about ourselves I also tie that to low self-esteem and also disrespecting ourselves. I can't tell you how many times, and I, I see this all the time, it's also how we disrespect. When I, when I meet clients, here's one of the things that I do. I will actually meet clients, not at their homes first. I um, have an outside, well, I actually, obviously, like you and I, we have the technology, so I have clients that I, I meet through you know, Google Hangouts, on Skype, etc. But the clients I meet that are local to my area, we will meet, like, our first appointment, first, obviously, is a phone call, but then we actually will meet, like, at a coffee house or something. I'll always walk them back to their car. How they treat their car will tell me volumes. And I don't mean by not just the outside of the car. When they open their car door and I shake their hand or, or whatever, there's a hug or whatever there is, when they open the car and I look inside the car, I'm taking, a, you know, a glance. If there's trash all over the bottom of the car, that mm. tells me volumes because how you treat your car is also to tell me how you respect the things that you own, right? That's just one piece. 
and obviously how we dress also tells you how we respect ourselves, etc. So again, how we talk to ourselves, right? That's also a form of respect, how we choose to respect ourselves. So that's a part of the negative thought, and that, then that ties in obviously to our self-esteem, self-confidence. It's, it's kind of layers, and of course that ties into our Un, you know, our subconscious, and then that ties into what we were brought. I mean, you know, we're talking layers and layers and layers here. Absolutely, yes. Psychology and how we were talked to when we were a child, and all these things. So here's the first thing: is first is the consciousness or the awareness of our habits. So obviously, this is all ingrained. So the first thing you do is, hey, I have a habit. The first thing is to recognize the habit. The second thing is actually catch yourself in the habit, and then you can start getting rid of those habits. So of course, we're all human. Right, so I, I have my little meltdown. Okay, I can recognize I'm having a meltdown. Now I, I can choose to either do something about getting out of the meltdown, or I can choose to wallow in the meltdown. So it's the same thing about negative thoughts, and that's why I wrote my steps of how I get out of my out of my ants. Right. Okay, it's like okay, I'm having the thought, I'm beating myself up. Now I can choose to take the steps to get out of the ant or to stay in the ant. So um, and that's why I love talking to you because I know we're kind of much. On the, I love talking to people that. A, are on a similar wavelength or can understand the wavelength so we can have a really nice two-way conversation to give massive value to other people. I, I do these shows because for me it's about giving lots of value to other people so they can get aha moments. For me it's always about I know there's always someone somewhere that's going to get some sort of aha from something we are saying that can take impact and action from what we're saying. Correct. That's why I do these. That's um, Good for you to do that. I remember years ago, uh, one particular client who was in this huge week-long retreat. Um, yeah, I could see the questioning look on her face, and I could only get just so far in her acceptance of what we were communicating about. And it was about two years later. She said, "I got it." I said, "Who is this?" <laughs> you know, and she told me who it was, and I said, "What did you get?" She says, remember when we were sitting in the room at the ranch and you said such and such and thus and so? She said, I got it. Well, that's all that matters. Now, I mean, that that's even asking a lot for that. That's the ego talking. But if she achieved that much, God bless that she got that. But that's why we do what we, that's why we're here. Now, we, we don't have to do anything. We're, you know, you and I are having a conversation. We're not really doing anything more than we would normally do anyway, which is talk because we're good at it. So if somebody hears something and they get something out of it, you know, isn't that great? That's a miracle in my opinion. That's just a miracle. And, and I, the reason why I like doing these shows is because you got to remember, you know, yes, some people don't do well one-on-one. -on -one. And obviously you and I, we can't touch every person in person, even, even doing um, workshops and everything. We can't reach everybody. For me, doing these shows is the fact that with technology, there may be someone in a third world country, someplace that I can't reach, even though I have clients all over, this is a way that possibly someone can hear this and it might touch somebody. So I love doing these and I love talking to all sorts of people, all sorts of authors and speakers and people that even I learn from somebody. Every person I talk to, I come away from something as well. So it's, we're yeah. all learning from each other, we're all teaching each other. So it's a, it's a really great way to just get out there and and also, every speaker, every voice, everybody resonates with someone different. The different faces, the different. That's why I also do these as videos and podcasts because right, right. people sometimes resonate with the body language, the diptongs, the you know, the hand movements, the facial features, the voices. You know, um, speaking of which, since this is also a podcast, can you please let everyone know where they can find you? Well, they can certainly. Um you can call me because I have no problem talking on the phone and my phone number is on my website if you want to go there or I can give it to you now 206-552-4658 and I'm assuming that if you're listening to this and wanting to call me that you're an okay person uh, you can email me at Joanne Victoria that's J-O-A-N-N-E Victoria like the Queen at Comcast.net and if you go to my website, GemmaBixley.com, you get two free books right there on the front page. You have a way of getting two free books. One is about your true self, and the other is leadership principles. And I wrote them both. One's bigger than the other, but they're both great things to have. 
Um, that would be good. And I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, everything under Joanne Victoria. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, uh, what else is there? Google+. Plus. And since this is a podcast, can you please spell out your website? Gemma Bixley is G as in George, E-M-M-A, Bixley, B as in boy, I, X as in X-Men, L-E-Y, <laughs> dot com. GemmaBixley.com, but just throw in my name in Google and it'll come up. That's wonderful. I always like to put that out there because there are people that are also listening. So also, the last topic I'd love to touch upon is let's talk a little bit about focus and clarity. I don't think people realize how important it is to be clear and focused because if we actually put out there, um, sometimes we're too vague. Now, there's one thing I do want to put out there, though. Um, I do, I mean, everyone has, I don't care, everyone has different spirituality, different faith beliefs, and whatever that is, whether you pray, whether you chant, whatever it is it is to you. There's one little tip that I am going to put out there that is, yes, be very focused and be very clear. Sometimes, if you are unclear, I always put in there, um, some. I, I will say, and more because if you're really that unclear if I'm let's say I'm doing a prayer of some kind I'll say this in other words how can I put this so let's say I'm praying for um, a specific uh, amount or I'm working on a project and or I'm looking for a specific amount of money I'll, let's say I'm unclear but I will say for my greatest and highest good or this and more, meaning because maybe I might be unclear, but my higher power will know what's better for me than I will. So let's say, Absolutely. and more. So I'm not, I'm not restricting my flow. So, however, it is important that you are clear and focused. Does that make sense? So we do need to be clear and focused. However, you can always add the and more. When you're at, when you, when people are putting down the, let's just say, to simplify it, when they, how much money do you want to make this year? That kind of thing. So you put down a figure, you know, a million dollars or more, because maybe God or the universe or the powers that be or your own limited thinking or unlimited thinking says, you know, I think she should get five. And you go, if somebody had asked you that, you'd go, I don't think that's possible because of what we do to ourselves. But that's why you have to say and more. But the focus is, is something, focus is really important because people don't, well, at the very beginning of this conversation when you said, you know, you could do the law of attraction for such and such things, but the whole thing is, you know, you needed to do your work, as we all do. And people who want to find fault with the right side of the brain and the creative and the intuitive and the spiritual and such and such don't understand that you have to do your work. So you have to focus on what it is that you want, but also the steps that you have to take to get there. People don't want to do the work. Some people just want to go to college, come out, have it with a degree, and get, say, "Well, give me one hundred and fifty thousand dollars." And you go, um, "Have you lived in this world yet?" So that's what's really important. So you have to focus on what do you want, what do you want, and how are you going to get there. And don't make a real long to-do list, but just keep it simple and focus one time a day, two times a day. None of this is complicated. It, it's that's the problem with people want it complicated. They figure if it's so simple, there must be something wrong with it. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, it's not. But focus and clarity are utmost in conversations. I tend to have conversations in my head. I have thoughts in my head, and then when I go to express them, I've left out the first ten words because I assume everybody knows what I'm thinking. So it's like, hmm, was there something else you were supposed to share with me? Oh, yeah, I forgot. What's missing? What did you not hear? I thought I said it but I didn't say it. So I have to be careful, depending upon who I'm talking to, that, oh, there's more to this than just the, the last two-thirds of the thought or the sentence. So it's really important, and, you know, the way people communicate today, which is ineffective in my mind, you know, where everything is done so fast. We've got this, the Google Hangout, we've got the text, we've got the phone, we've got the social media. So you have to take that time to be as clear as possible so that people get and understand what you are saying. They don't have to understand the meaning behind it necessarily, but get what you're saying. And I, I'll purposely because I'm tired of thing. I'm tired of 
500 page books, I try to do my responses in every place with one, two, or three words because I want people to get, you know, people's staying power is not too long anymore. So I want people to get it in one word, my feeling about what I'm sharing with them. One word, two words, three words, maybe four. And it's also really clear, like, again, we're, we're, we think people can read our minds. And again, as, as with technology and as fast paced as we are and as busy as people are, we need to be really clear as to A, what we want from people and what we're, the message is that we are delivering it and also what the solutions we are providing for people. We get so wrapped up in trying to, like, we'll go on and on and on an email and all of a sudden tell them what we're, what we're actually emailing them about. It's like, no, in the very first sentence, this is why I'm emailing you and this is what I need you to do, whatever it is. But we, we go on and on and on and on and, then, and all of a sudden, then we tell them what. We really need to start getting what I call pithy. It's just like really get concise and quick right. and accurate about what it is that we're attempting to say or not attempting, but what we are saying. Um, right. Really clear and focused on what we're saying. It's just so important these days. And because and, and, people are just, I mean, how many emails do we get a day? And we're just so busy. And there's one other thing I really did also, I think you need to bring up too, is about we really needed to start really putting ourselves first. A lot of people think that is selfish. It's not selfish. If you don't start taking care of ourselves first and putting ourselves first, we can't be there for other people. It's so important. We need to start getting proper rest eating right, exercising, doing something so that our vitality, our energy is up so that we can deliver value for other people, so we can be totally aware, have enough energy, you know, especially as females, we're, you know, we're parents, we're partners, we're, you know, we're, we're wearing so many multiple hats, um, single parents, um, you know, we're everything. I'm not saying that men don't have a lot as well, being fathers, you know, some of them are, you know. Well, There's a total difference. Women are the source. Women are the source for everyone. Men go to women to be uh, treated fairly, to be helped, to be everything. But women are the source of everything. We can go back to the supposed first story of Adam and Eve. You know, Ad Eve chose the tree of knowledge and she took the bite of the apple. She could have taken the easy way out and she didn't. So she's chosen a harder road for us girls, us ladies, us women. And we as women have a different path to follow than men do. You know, men, you know, men I think have lost their way a little bit and women have not found their way yet enough. So especially yeah. if you're choosing to be a career woman on top of everything. And you know, especially if you want to be a career woman and have children and 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 it is. It's it's a lot on the plate and trying to balance having a romance life that stays active and everything else. It is. It's a lot. Um so well, if anybody can do it, a woman can. It's just that the choices that she makes should not be judged so harshly. I mean, we judge, <clears throat> excuse me, all the time, but I don't think they should be judged so harshly whether she's chosen to put her career on hold, have children first, have children second, not have children at all. Who cares? Right. Who cares? The only one that should care. Not selfish to put yourself first sometimes. You have to, if you want to be healthy, have a successful business, have children that come out with a healthy mind, spirit, happy, and just a lot on your plate. And you know, if you don't do certain actions, something something gets sacrificed. You have kids that are on drugs. You have, you know, I mean, there's so many something sacrifices. So you're gonna have to make choices, and you're gonna have to live with those choices. So, you know, please make sure you take care of yourself. It's just so vitally important. And that goes to men too. How many men? sacrifice, don't take care of themselves, and do stupid things, and they lose their marriage, and their kids, I mean, just, it goes both ways. Everybody needs to start realizing that taking care of yourself doesn't mean it's selfish. It means if you don't take care of yourself, something's going to sacrifice, and something's going to blow up. So um, it's just really important that everybody takes care of themselves, um, mentally, physically, spiritually, you know. Otherwise, you'll come from an empty well, and you can't be there for anyone else if you're all dried up. Exactly. If you're all dried up, you have to be, you have to be juicy. You have to be uh, complete. You have to be healthy. The sleep is vital. You know, sleep and food. With that, you can do most anything. If you don't have good sleep and if you don't have good food, you're useless to the world. You know, stay away from the fast food restaurants if you can. 
you know, choose to treat yourself well. Be clean in everything, in your thought, your word, your deed, what you put in or on your body. I mean, treat yourself like a king, like a queen, because that's taking care of yourself. That's putting yourself first so that you're able to do the service that you're on earth for. So, absolutely. Well, it's been an absolute joy to have you. I just love, I love bantering with you because... I, to me, it's all about bridging the East and the West. Um, I, I, for me, Western is technology. It's fast. It's um, new thoughts. Um, and for me, the East is literally the spirituality. It's the faith. It's it's all the you know herbiology and aromatherapy. It's all the it's all the things for me that is the health and the, the spirituality. And so for me, that's why. That's why I call my business, you know, conscious business collaborations. Why, is, for me, my business is bridging the East and the West. And I think if we can really find a balance between the two, it'd be a pretty amazing world. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the Western world has so much to bring in terms of, you know, technologies and all the things that really help us get to our new world. And at the same time, we're kind of torturing our new world and polluting it and toxins and all these things. So. Um, I love talking to people that really kind of get both worlds, and I think you're one of those people, so it's been an absolute delight talking to you. I've enjoyed it as well. Thank you. So um, is there any last beautiful wisdom you'd like to impart the audience with? Well, I would just say you brought it up a little bit. I just think it's really important that you respect yourself. Respect and accept. Respect who you are and accept who you are, even if it's a bad day and you stub your toe. There's always the next minute, the next day, the next thing. But respect and accept who you are at this moment. If you want to be different, you can make a list on how to get there. But respect and accept. I'll stick with that for now. Well, thank you. It's an absolute joy to have you. Um, and please um, let everyone know where they can find you once again. Oh, oh certainly all over the internet. Facebook, uh, Twitter, Pinterest, uh, Google Plus, right here, and GemmaBixley.com, G-E-M-M-A-B-I-X-L-E-Y.com, and just Google Joanne Victoria, J-O-A-N-N-E, Victoria, like the queen. So thank you so much, Joanne, for joining me. I look forward to many more conversations. And I wish everyone a beautiful evening. You've been with your host, Carly Lissa Thorne, and you can find me at C-A-R-L-Y-A-L-Y-S-S-A-T-H-O-R-N-E.com. I look forward to bringing you many more valuable tips next week, and I shall see you then. Enjoy.